Hello, my dear sister. Lately, I've been having this deep burden on my heart to prepare a special message just for you, a despairing wife. And this burden has been so strong that I just had to sit down and write down what was on my heart. I really, really want to share something very important from the heart of God to you, personally to you, a despairing wife. So the name of my message, Despairing Wife, there is hope for you. And that's what I'm going to talk about. First of all, what is despair? Despair means to be without hope to give up all hope or expectation. So my dear sister, if right now you're having the thoughts about your marriage, like what is even the reason to go on in my marriage? How can I go on in my marriage? I have no strength. I, have, I feel powerless. I feel numb. Does anybody care for me? Does anybody even care what's going on in my marriage? And obviously somebody does. And I guess it's me because I'm doing this message especially for you. And the Lord moved me to do this especially for you. So don't believe that nobody cares. If nobody else does, at least there is one person. Fourth, if you're having these thoughts like, there is no way I will be able to go on in this marriage. I am done. I am absolutely done. So if you're having these thoughts in your heart and in your mind, most likely you're in the state of despair. And I know exactly how you feel because in the first years of my marriage, I experienced, experienced deepest despair. I was literally in the pit of despair. So I know exactly what you're going through. And obviously there are different, as I would call them, natural conditions that cause or push us towards experiencing despair. Sometimes, like in my case, uh, the reasons why I experienced my despair was my inability and immaturity to cope with some difficult circumstances that I had to face when I came from Russia to America. I couldn't cope with those circumstances and there was so much more. I wouldn't go into it right now, but it was extremely hard. Then sometimes our despair can be caused by poor leadership or mistakes that our husbands make. Sometimes our despair can be caused by even um, after effects, so to say, of our own sin that we are reaping and keep reaping and then it just brings us down to despair. Sometimes it's a lack of encouragement and loneliness during the hard and trying and difficult times in your life and I experienced that too. It seems like I was the only one who, who you know, truly struggled and I didn't know where to go except my husband, obviously. So, and all those things are tangible reasons, you know, from a um, fleshly perspective to be driven to despair. And maybe at this very moment, you have even despaired of your own life. I understand how serious it is. And again, I've been there too. I, I, I despair, I, and during those uh, first years of my marriage, I have even despaired of my own life. I was in the pit of despair. And looking back at my despair, uh, the, I started thinking, and the Lord ha has gave me some insight into the root, into the spiritual roots of despair, because it is a spiritual condition. And one of the roots that the Lord has showed me was the loss of vision. I did not have a vision to keep going on. I didn't have reasons to keep going on. I didn't know why I should go on in my marriage, in my life even. I just lost on all vision to keep living. And, and what should I keep living for? The, the, another reason or another root of spiritual root of the despair that the Lord pointed out to me was complete loss of all spiritual strength. I was drained to the point of feeling numb. Um, I, feel, I felt powerless. I felt like I couldn't go on. Maybe that's exactly what you're experiencing right now, my dear sister. 
And another major, major root of despair that the Lord also pointed out to me in my heart was the loss of faith, uh, the loss of hope and the loss of courage. I just lost all faith in the goodness of the Lord. Why should I go on? I, he's not there. I, I don't hear him. He's not helping me. And I just lost faith. So here am I, my dear sister. Uh, this is a chance of a lifetime for you right now. As I hope the Lord will use me as a tool in your life to restore this vision in you to strengthen you in the Lord and to stir up that little faith that might still be somewhere in there in your heart, to stir it up so you can go on. And here am I for you to do this. Install this vision in you once again, renew this vision why you should go on, strengthen you and give you hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that the, all those things can be produced and worked in you only by the power of the Lord, supernaturally. And that power is 100% without any doubt is available to you this very second, the power of the Holy Spirit to produce those things in you. So I wanted to ask you something, just maybe for a couple of minutes, try to quiet on your heart for a second and um, lift yourself up from, all, from this realm of negativity and the pressures and, and the screams and, and the noise. Just quiet on your spirit at least for a second right now and imagine yourself as if you were not visualize Jesus, we, I don't recommend doing that. But imagine yourself as if you were sitting at the feet of Jesus right now, this very second, please, please, it will be a very healing experience to you right now. So imagine you're sitting at the feet of Jesus and here are his words for you, exactly, specifically for you, in your situation right now, in your pit of despair. He's reaching out, he's looking at you, and this is what he's saying to you. I long to be close to you, my daughter. I see your broken heart and long to restore your crushed spirit. I'm here for you to lift you out of this pit of despair. And these words are obviously coming from his word, Psalm 34, 18 and 40 from 1 to 3. You do not have to be afraid. I'm with you. Psalm 23, 4. My grace is all you need. My power works best in your weaknesses. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. I will lead you in triumph. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and make a bride out of you without spot or wrinkle. All things will continue to work together for your good in your life, because you have been called according to my purpose. And that purpose is to confirm you into my image. Romans 8, 29. If I'm for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. You live for me. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. So my dear sister, I hope that this fog of despair is slowly being lifted and you are seeing this goodwill of the Father towards you and you're soaking his words of life that are bringing slowly, restoring that life that you have been so desperately needing during this time. So let us regain this eternal perspective, eternal purpose and eternal vision. And I will talk to you about this in our second part. Follow me along. Blessings.